Church of St Giles in home. In the East Trent group we've had a beautiful harvest festival season which began in August with our Lammastide service at Langford and it concludes today with a service for Holy Communion here in home. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. You delight in creation, its colour and diversity. Yet we have misused the earth and plundered its resources for our own selfish ends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have brought order out of chaos. Light in darkness, good out of evil. But we have preferred darkness in words and deeds which dishonour God's holy name. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You have showered us with blessings, but we have been grudging towards others and lacking in generosity, in word and deed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May God forgive us for our misuse of the earth and his good gifts, and help us to live good lives. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jerry is now going to read from the book of Deuteronomy. The reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses, and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, 
an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but to remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that you may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jerry. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. o Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fall. This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are, are you than birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. So what do we do with the good gifts that God gives us? Maybe a little way to test how we're doing at this time, perhaps especially at this difficult time in 2020, is to think about where we worry more about building storehouses to keep things for ourselves, or worry more about building distribution centres where we may share with others. And Nigel, church warden here, 
is going to share some of his thoughts about this season. So, Nigel. So, here we are today, bringing you this service from the Barton Chapel in Holmes Church, a chapel built in 1485 from the proceeds of a wealthy sheep farmer who had thousands of sheep all around this church. Now those fields are still there, the chapel and the church are still here, looking much the same as they did when John Barton left it. But now the fields are down to arable farming and to cattle. Now there's one thing that struck me throughout the pandemic, and that is the world of farming. It's been to me rather like a rock. Wherever you go, whatever happened during lockdown, the farmers carried on. Tractors, in the fields, workers, work, cut, cutting the hedges, people going about their business, often with a smile, always anxious that you should give them a wave as they zigzagged up and down the fields with their machines. But just cast your minds back to October 2019. What happened at this time of the year? Well, it was very different to this year because the fields were waterlogged. The rains kept coming in the autumn. They couldn't get the seed sowing machines onto the fields. In fact, it was so bad, the sowing of the winter wheat and winter barley was one of the worst in living memory. <clears throat> so much so that the farmers relied then on sowing in the spring. So the farming year, which starts us now, started off very badly. And then we had the floods that took place in the early part of 2020. And then, believe it or not, a tremendous drought hit us all the way through the spring, so that this, even the spring barley had a pretty bad start, and wheat. And so we know that the crop yields were down and not very good at all, and that has caused quite a lot of heartache amongst the farming fraternity to try and get returns. And then we get to this time of the year, 2020. We see the smoke from the sugar factory as it fires up to take in the sugar beet crop. But one thing we have seen, it's been one of the best sowing seasons I can remember. Wherever you see, farmers have been planting their crops, the machines have been zigzagging up and down the fields. And what has happened? What has happened is there are hundreds if not thousands of acres of new growing winter wheat and barley. Green shoots everywhere, giving us hope. This is God's way of saying, you've had a bad year. Maybe next year, look forward to better things. Those green shoots are sending us a signal. Let's rejoice in that and see the end of bad times and the beginning of good new times for us all. Thank you, Nigel. <clears throat> and we're going to say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The first part of our service is complete, so stay safe, stay well, and God bless you.